Welcome to this webinar on healthy aging and probiotics offered to you by IPA Europe and the International Congress of Probiotics, Prebiotics and New Food. I am Rosanna Pecher, Executive Director of the European uh, Probiotic Association. And I'm here with our guest, Professor Claudio Franceschi and uh, Professor Patrizia Brigidi and with the moderator, Sylvie Binda and Christine Coppelus of the IPA Europe Scientific Working Group. Now I will tell you a few words of introduction about the Congress and about IPA Europe. The Congress is at the 11th edition and will take place from 12th to 14th September in Rome. The Congress is held every two years over the past two decades at the Pontificia Urbaniana University in Rome. You will find more information on the website and you can already register. IPA Europe is uh, the European chapter of the International Probiotic Association. Um, the members are companies directly engaged in the manufacture of probiotic culture, probiotic food and food supplements. The mission of IPA Europe is to establish probiotic standards and voluntary guidelines to establish a harmonized legal status for probiotics in the EU and to participate actively in the EFSA consultation process and engage in dialogue with all relevant stakeholders. So now I will introduce you our moderator, which are Sylvie Binda. Sylvie Binda is uh, R&D Process and Technological Director at Lalleman Health Solution, and she is also Chairman of the IPA Europe Scientific Working Group and member of the International Scientific Committee. Christine Kopelus is Director of Scientific and Public Affairs at BioGaia, and she is member of the IPA Europe Scientific Working Group and also of the Global Committee of Education and Communication. Please, Sylvie, the floor is yours. So thank you, Rosanna. So maybe just before to go directly to the webinar. So on the next slide, I wanted to just to share with you some uh, just uh, two or three things. The first one is to say that the webinar on that day is belonging to a series of webinars that we are organized. And the first one was uh, in uh, last November in 2020. And uh, the topic on that webinar was to understand the links between diet and the quality of life. And it was uh, moderated by Bruno Pot and myself. And we had the pleasure at that time to have uh, Professor Joel Doré from INRA from France. And he gave, I would say, the, a nice panorama on all the life scientific insights on how we can see that the diet is really uh, helpful uh, to, uh, to link and to keep the symbiosis between uh, microbiome, human microbiome, and also uh, human health. And it was really key because he, he gave really a, a good panorama with, uh, I would say, the, the, the last five years uh, evaluation with a lot of clinical investigation. And one of his last words was to say that if he wants to go more and especially to see and to show that a probiotic can really prevent some diseases, we have to change a little bit the ways to make some studies and especially to make some long-term studies. So that, that's it for the, that one. And so um, for the after, the slide after, the idea uh, is really to, to show you why we need, uh, I would say, the scientific working group uh, within uh, IPA. Uh, I will answer to, uh, to that question with two things. The first one is a basic one. We need science to discuss with scientists, but we need also uh, science to, uh, to feed all the relevant information and conversation with uh, regulator people, but also with uh, people. And the idea is really uh, the spirit of the science for all, because we need to use uh, pragmatical and uh, scientific argumentations. The second thing, as we said at the beginning, we need to talk with the other scientists. We have also to, uh, to publish some papers, which are peer review for sure. And uh, we put uh, one of the last papers published uh, in July, last July in 2020, in the Journal of Frontier of Microbiology. And the idea was really to develop a model, an easy model to answer to one simple question is that 
uh, to say if your microorganism is a probiotic or not. And it's just an easy way to use four criteria and you are able to answer to that question. And what was really interesting is that paper was not only made by uh, IPA Europe scientists, it was also co work with people coming from other organizations like Marie Ellen Sanders coming from ISAP and also uh, from university. So we had the chance to have a professor Colin in on that papers and he's coming from Cork University. So I think I insist a, li a little bit on that. I think it's really the spirit of collaborative and uh, collective intelligence to have uh, this uh, scientific working group that I have the pleasure to animate. So today, uh, so today the webinar will be, next slide, thanks. It's really uh, the idea of uh, what we call a scientific dialogue. So uh, we built this with that spirit, with Rosanna, Christine, and uh, Eleonora, but also Claudio and Patricia. The idea is really a dialogue between Claudio and, France and Patricia, but also a dialogue with us, all the people who are attending today, and also us as a moderation. So the idea of the day was really to present to you um, a key questions which can be the, the secret of uh, healthy aging. I'm sure that at the end, we will know how, how we can be all centenarian people, probably not just making yoga, I think, but we will learn uh, this uh, just after. And as woman first, I have the pleasure to, just to introduce uh, Patricia, Professor Patricia Brigidi. She's today a fermentation biotechnologies uh, professor in Bologna University. Uh, a main focus of research uh, is uh, microbiome for sure and the, the links with uh, human health. And she's also the manager of a lot of projects, of uh, European projects also. And she was one of the, I would say, one of the nice co author of these really good papers published in 2014 on, uh, on, uh, within the, the Nature's paper, in where we were explaining for one of the first times the links between uh, diet but also exposome. And there was a nice comparison between people from Tanzania and also people from Italy. So, Patricia, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Sylvie, for the nice uh, presentation. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, first of all, uh, let me thank uh, the organizers for uh, inviting me today. So great opportunity to show you our most uh, recent uh, uh, results uh, about uh, uh, the role of a microbiome uh, for healthy aging. Uh, we know that the gut microbiome describe, uh, uh, I would like to say, an adaptive trajectory along uh, uh, human aging. So providing the host with uh, specific uh, ecological services uh, which are calibrated for each stage of our age. Uh, in infants, uh, the gut microbiome shows uh, a reduced biodiversity. So we were saying that uh, in, uh, in infants, uh, uh, the gut microbiome uh, shows uh, a reduced biodiversity and uh, supports mainly the milk digestion, uh, boosts uh, the maturation of the immune system, and uh, is uh, involved in the production of uh, vitamins. In uh, adults, uh, the microbiome, the intestinal microbiome, has uh, the highest value of biodiversity and they play a key role uh, in. Uh, energy and immune homeostasis. Um, in elderly, I mean in the old age, the gut microbiome has been demonstrated to show a strong decrease of its biodiversity and an increased representation of opportunistic pro-inflammatory microorganisms. However, um, Whereas uh, there are many, many papers uh, published uh, describing uh, uh, the microbiome profile in infants, uh, in adults, uh, in both uh, health and uh, disease uh, condition, much, much less is known about uh, the microbiome uh, of uh, elderly. And uh, several uh, uh, questions are still uh, without any answer, are still open, such as, uh, for example, when does microbiome start uh, to change uh, in healthy elderly? And uh, does uh, the microbiome have a role uh, in healthy aging? 
And uh, for sure, we know that uh, the age-related changes uh, in diet, in uh, uh, lifestyle, uh, as well as uh, changes uh, in uh, the gut uh, physiology and the functionality, uh, such as, uh, for example, a reduced intestinal motility and uh, in increased intestinal permeability impact on the gut microbiome and the impact on the crosstalk of the gut microbiome with the host, nurturing immunosenations, inflammation, and many of the chronic metabolic disorders associated with the ages. So, in this uh, scenario, in this uh, complex uh, scenario, uh, we decided to study beside uh, uh, the old people also the microbiome profile of centenarians and the semi supercentenarians. Because uh, this uh, subgroup of uh, population uh, uh, is quite uh, interesting. Our uh, they are uh, people able to reach the extreme limits of human lifespan uh, since they live about 20, 30 years more than their demographic cohort, avoiding and or postponing uh, the, all the major age-related chronic diseases. And so, for this reason, they can be uh, considered one of uh, the best models for studying uh, healthy aging in a human, and for sure a unique model uh, to study the relationship between uh, uh, gut microbiome uh, and uh, healthy, uh, healthy aging. And um, for sure, they can support again help us in answering some questions such as does a microbiota signature of longevity exist or is there a link between microbiota and the changes chances to achieve longevity so in this uh, perspective, uh, we described uh, the longest uh, uh, available uh, trajectory of uh, human uh, gut microbiota along, uh, along aging, analyzing by different uh, molecular approach approaches, I mean uh, 16S, uh, uh, ribosomal RNA, metagenomics, and metabolomics, uh, the microbiome profile of uh, four age groups, uh, including young adults uh, with a mean age of uh, uh, 30 years, uh, elderly with a mean age of 70 years, centenarians, uh, which uh, includes uh, people from 99 to 104 years, and semi super centenarians. Uh, which uh, includes uh, uh, subject from uh, 105 to 109 uh, years. All of these uh, uh, centenarian and semi-super centenarians were recruited in Italy and they were living in their own uh, uh, household showing, let me say, a, a good uh, physical uh, cognitive uh, condition. And what is quite interesting for us, they uh, showed a, a high Mediterranean diet score. The first uh, uh, results uh, uh, we obtained by analyzing the gut microbiome of these uh, four age group is uh, represented in uh, this uh, slide. And uh, um, as you can see, uh, we could identify a very good separation uh, among uh, the four age groups. Uh, elderly showed uh, similarities uh, with uh, uh, young, and, but what was uh, very surprising, at least for us, uh, it was uh, the clear separation between uh, centenarians and semi super centenarians. Even if uh, the age gap is quite uh, limited, uh, I, we are uh, uh, in mean, I mean, uh, uh, five, uh, six year in average. So a small difference in age, but a great difference at the microbiome profile level. Uh, the fecal microbiota of all the uh, four age groups um, 
was dominated by uh, Lachnospiracea, uh, three main families, I would like to say, and in particular uh, Bacteroidaceae, Lachnospiraceae, and Ruminococaceae. And uh, in particular, we could also identify the, um, 13 bacterial species by using uh, metagenomics, uh, which were represented in uh, all the four age uh, the four age groups so which can be considered permanent colonizers of our gastrointestinal uh, tract and among these uh, 13 species i would like to remind you uh, bifidobacterium adolescentis bifidobacterium longum and fecalibacterium prasmitis uh, however, uh, the relative abundance of uh, these uh, uh, microbial taxis uh, showed a strong rearrangement in aging with an increase of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, pro-inflammatory subdominant microorganisms. So just to summarize uh, the main results uh, obtained in our study, uh, I wanted to uh, underline that uh, there is uh, like a, a core of a highly occurring uh, sym symbiotic uh, uh, bacterial group, uh, the yellow balloon, uh, which remain during, uh, um, during age, aging, but uh, that is uh, uh, the main uh, relevant uh, um, results. Uh, this core varies uh, in uh, uh, relative abundance of uh, its uh, uh, it members uh, with a, a strong decrease of this uh, dominant uh, microbial uh, group, uh, which leave uh, uh, space for the uh, growth of subdominant uh, microorganisms uh, which uh, uh, show uh, a pro-inflammatory activity and uh, the increase uh, of these uh, subdominant um, bacterial groups uh, is uh, always uh, um, related with a strong decrease in biodiversity. Uh, by metagenomic analysis, we could also identify some uh, specific bacterial groups uh, which, uh, uh, are, which were age related for example young where young uh, subjects uh, were characterized by an enrichment of species belonging to the genus bacteroides and eubacterium whereas the centenarians and semi super centenaria showed a higher abundance in escherichia coli in uh, ackermansia and christensenella but also a strong reduction in, uh, F -pra, in Fecalibacterium prasmisi and in uh, Alistipes. And um, what, uh, by using uh, the shotgun uh, metagenomic analysis, uh, we also perform a functional characterization of the gut uh, microbiome uh, during uh, the different uh, ages showing uh, a strong rearrangement, uh, particularly in uh, genes uh, devoted to the metabolic pathway of uh, carbohydrates, uh, amino acid, and uh, xenobiotic. In uh, all the subjects, uh, uh, carbohydrate metabolism and um, the production of uh, short-chain fatty acid uh, was uh, assessed, a strong reduction, uh, and that was coherent with uh, the decrease uh, uh, with the, the loss of fecalibacterium uh, of fecalibacterium prasmisi and uh, uh, eubacterium. But uh, on the same time, uh, we could uh, uh, demonstrate uh, demonstrate a strong increase in the, the proteolytic profile uh, of uh, at metabolic at the metabolic level. So once again, uh, supporting in coherence with uh, the increase 
of the pro-inflammatory uh, pathobiont. So it means that uh, with age, there is a, a clear shift of the, at the, metab at the metabolic level of the microbiome uh, functionality, uh, a shift which uh, uh, induce uh, a proteolytic uh, layout, uh, a, pro a proteolytic metabolism uh, related with aging, uh, and so particularly centenarians and semi-super centenarians resulted uh, uh, with uh, a strong decrease in uh, genes involved in these uh, uh, metabolic pathways, uh, whereas uh, elderly and uh, uh, young adult showed a much more saccharolytic uh, profile of uh, the uh, microbiome genes. So uh, 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 an activity involved in, uh, in uh, the production, in a major production of uh, short chain fatty acid. And uh, we can say, or that this uh, specific characteristic proteolytic uh, functional layout of uh, uh, centenarian and semi super centenaria uh, was uh, particularly related to the uh, improved uh, tryptophan metabolism, which uh, uh, supported the reduction of tryptophan bioavailability, which uh, in turn can impact uh, in, on the cognitive impairment and the impact on the immune activation. On the other side, the, the highest uh, uh, tyrosine metabolism support the increase of indolic metabolites, uh, which in turn uh, are involved in the onset of a cancer, depression, and uh, diabetes. And uh, uh, this uh, distinctive uh, uh, microbiome structure of uh, centenarians and semi-supercentenarians uh, was uh, supported also by a distinctive urine metabolomic profile, uh, which was characterized uh, by a significant increase uh, secretion of some uh, metabolite, uh, some specific uh, metabolite, such as uh, phenylacetyl, glutamine, and paracrisol sulfate. Uh, both of them are microbiome metabolites derived from the catabolism of a protein, in particular of a, a metabolism of aromatic amino acid performed by proteobacterium. So once again, confirming also from the metabolic, metabolomic point of view, the proteolytic layout of the microbiome profile in this, uh, in this subject. Um, but what was uh, quite interesting uh, for us, uh, it was uh, to see for the first time in long living uh, individual, also a strong increase in uh, microbiome genes uh, involved in xenobiotic degradation. Indeed, we assessed a, a strong, a progressive increase with age, uh, for toluene, ethyl uh, benzene, chlorobenzene, and uh, chlorocycle exan degradation pathway. So these uh, chemicals, uh, mainly uh, deriving from the industrial manufacturing, are toxic and are considered among the main um, indoor and outdoor uh, pollutants. So the selection of uh, gut microbiota components uh, which are able to, to uh, detoxify such important chemical compound uh, represent uh, a, an important, a, a, a really clever, smart, uh, let me say, um, adaptive response of this exception in old individual which are able to adapt themselves, themselves in an anthropic uh, environment. And uh, I would like uh, just uh, to underline some uh, few points uh, very, very quickly, uh, because uh, um, 
these uh, centenarian semi super centenarians presented uh, a, 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 an age uh, related to this biotic uh, uh, profile of the microbiome as uh, described before. But uh, I would like to stress that they were characterized also by a relevant increase in uh, two taxa, I mean Ackermansia and Christensenella, uh, which are known as promoting uh, bacteria, which are able to promote the uh, immune uh, modulation, I mean in a protective uh, uh, activity against uh, inflammation, and uh, are also involved uh, in uh, sustaining uh, um, healthy uh, metabolic homeostasis. And uh, uh, this uh, greater prevalence uh, of uh, else associated uh, taxa, I mean, uh, Akermansia and uh, Christensenella, seems, uh, uh, seems uh, to be robust to geography because uh, a comparison between Italian and Chinese. Uh, centenarians and semi uh, super centenarians uh, showed that, that both of them uh, had a microbiome enriched in Akermansia and in Kestensenella, which can be, which can be uh, considered uh, like a signature uh, of healthy aging and longevity, regardless uh, lifestyle and dietary uh, habits. In particular, uh, Christian Senella has been associated with uh, several uh, uh, positive uh, metabolic uh, uh, effects, uh, including uh, a positive correlation uh, with uh, short chain fatty acid, a negative correlation with uh, 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 lipid uh, uh, traits, uh, and a negative uh, correlation with uh, BMI. So I would like to say that Christian Senella is a quite uh, interesting candidate as next generation probiotics. So in conclusion, just a few um, uh, take, uh, um, take home messages. Uh, first of all, microbiome and longevity is uh, a domain, uh, is a research area still uh, in a rather descriptive stage. Aging is characterized by a progressive decline of the gut microbiota diversity with uh, an increased colonization by opportunistic uh, uh, and pathobionts uh, uh, bacteria. And uh, um, also is characterized by a strong metabolic rearrangement with uh, uh, an increase in xenobiotic degradation, but uh, in a, a modified uh, altered uh, carbohydrate hydrate and amino acid uh, met metabolism. Uh, semi supercentenarians are characterized uh, by a distinctive uh, enrichment of uh, health promoting taxa, such as uh, Ackermansia and uh, Christensenella, which can uh, contribute to reduce uh, uh, meta inflammation and, in particular, um, the um, the inflammation related to aging. And finally, Christian Senella may represent a signature uh, of longevity and an interesting potential next, uh, next gen uh, probiotics. Uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you so much, Patricia, for this very interesting uh, presentation. It was very clear and uh, very interesting to hear all the research that you have done so far. Um, I see that my video is not on, but uh, you can. I hope you can hear my voice. Um, I would very much like to thank you, and then we. I will introduce our next speaker. And then after our next speaker, we will take any questions that the, uh, the attendees have here. And I just want to remind everybody that are attending that they can write their questions in the question and answer. And then uh, Sylvie and I will pick them up after Cla Claudio has spoken to us. So I would uh, like to introduce now Claudio Franceschi 
who is Professor Emeritus at the University of Bologna in Italy since 2016. And he devoted himself to the study of human immunology and has held numerous positions, including scientific director of the Italian National Research Center for Aging, as well as founding and directing the Luigi Galvani Center for Integrated Studies of Bioinformatics, Biophysics and Biocomplexity at the University of Bologna. From 2018, he is the head of the Laboratory of Systemic Medicine of Healthy Aging at the Lapochevsky University Nitschi Novgorod, Russia. And he is the author of more than 800 articles in peer reviewed journals. So please over to you, Claudio. We look forward to hear your presentation here as well. So thanks Patricia, because uh, uh, Patricia is the real expert uh, of the microbiome. I, have a, I am an expert uh, of inflammation, aging, uh, uh, which uh, the first paper where I propose this uh, general uh, uh, hypothesis about aging is uh, has a 20, more than 20 years, has a lot of uh, quotation despite being published uh, in a second or third or fourth class journal. Uh, which is even better, and uh, is an evolutionary perspective of it on immunosenescence. And uh, some years later, I wrote this paper with Judith Campisi uh, regarding inflammation and its contribution to age-associated disease. And this is also a highly quoted uh, papers. And uh, the idea is that is inflammation contribute to practically all the age related major and minor diseases. And uh, this is another review paper uh, where we tried to uh, put together uh, inflammation and the uh, age related changes that occur uh, at the metabolic level, as uh, Patricia uh, suggested before. So the basic idea is that uh, uh, inflammation, so inflammation is uh, basically beneficial and adaptive and evolutionary concern, and is crucial for repair and survival. But of course, we live more than what uh, evolution was uh, prepared for us. Uh, usually people were living not more than 30, 40 or 50 years. Uh, but uh, after this age, uh, there is uh, the, the, the inflammatory process continue to increase and from green beneficial become red, become chronic and detrimental. And uh, recently, uh, a paper has been published today, yesterday. So this is a paper that appeared, just appeared, uh, where together with the people in at the University of Stanford, we found a new inflammatory clock that predict multimorbidity, immunosenescence, and, and is particularly important to understand cardiovascular uh, disease, cardiovascular aging and related diseases. Uh, so this is uh, the idea that is with calendar age, this uh, immune age marker. So this is the, the, the marker that we uh, identified. You see that there is a, an age related increase, but the centenarians are red, have a low inflammatory index. Uh, uh, with respect to people uh, of age between 60 and 80. So uh, you can see here uh, in more details uh, that the inflam inflammatory, this inflammatory index is about 40 times less in centenarians than in uh, younger people. Together with uh, many friends that have studied uh, uh, aging and in immunology of aging, uh, we published this paper uh, a couple of years ago, Chronic Inflammation in the Etiology of Disease Across Lifespan. 
suggesting that cardiovascular disease, but cancer, diabetes, uh, kidney disease, liver disease, autoimmunity, neurodegenerative disorder, all have a chronic inflammation at their basis. Um, and this is the cartoons, the systemic chronic inflammation or inflammaging. And you can see that there are a variety of, uh, of contributors, and particularly one of these is dysbiosis and diet. And this can impinge upon the age-related diseases, from cardiovascular disease to cancer to sarcopenia and immunosenescence. In this paper, uh, we suggested, uh, we pointed out that uh, human longevity must be considered within an evolutionary, but also very important in an ecological perspective. And uh, that the related variants are highly context dependent, changing with age, time, and geography. So it's difficult to extrapolate from Italy to China. And is for this reason, it's remarkable what uh, Patrizia said about uh, the commonality, uh, some commonality between uh, Italian and Chinese centenarians in the gut microbiota. And this is the idea that we have at least three genetics because there is the usual genome, but we have also the mitochondrial genome and the microbiome. The microbiome is the only modifiable uh, genome and the number of genes that are present in the microbiomes are between 30 and 50 times the genes of our genome. So is a, an unbelievable genetic machinery, which can be modified by uh, diet, uh, probiotic, and so on. So the, the diet is a way to modify not our genetics, but the genetics of, of our, uh, our guest, uh, the microbiome. And another concept that is important to understand what Patricia said, is the concept that with aging, we become extremely different to each other. So there is an increase of heterogeneity, uh, not only of immune response, but of, of all parameters. And I called this phenomenon immunobiography. And of course, inflammaging is one of the most important uh, uh, phenomenon that undergo an enormous heterogeneity. And, uh, at the individual level, there is a, an enormous plasticity because according to early events or adult and late life events, including the gut microbiome, both early and late, uh, later, uh, a, a person can follow different scenarios, different valleys, from inflammaging to tolerance to lack of response. And this can, uh, 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 explain the enormous heterogeneity of immune response and inflammaging at the population level. And this uh, should, should be very clear. So the newborn are very similar each other despite uh, having different father and mother, but with age there is an enormous, uh, 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 the trajectory are completely different. There is an enormous divergence. Uh, which can be explained by the starting genetics, the, the immunobiography, but also by, by the diet and the microbiome. And the other concept that is very important is the concept of hormesis. So um, the idea is that there is a, a biphasic nonlinear response to poisons, to toxic substances. So very low doses of uh, of, uh, of toxic substances increases the adaptability of the body, but if they follow, if they increase, the dose increase, you enter in a negative space. And uh, we published this paper that Mediterranean diet can be understood within the hormesis paradigm. So the idea is that Mediterranean food, Mediterranean diet full of vegetables 
vegetables have a very low amount of toxic substances, which are, uh, which probably can exert an hormetic effect. And so the idea is that there is a lifelong adaptive process uh, with the two viruses, bacteria, psychological stress, chemicals, but also to the med diet, for example, or caloric restriction. And eventually, you can, the med diet, for example, is able to counteract inflammation and reduce inflammation. And this is what we tried to check in the European project New Age, where I was a coordinator. And the idea is that an appropriate whole diet, the, Medi the fortified Mediterranean diet, can decrease the level of inflammation. And uh, we recruited people in Italy, France, the Netherlands, Poland, and UK, uh, a total of uh, 1,294 volunteers, which were randomly divided into following a med diet for one year. For one year. And this is, uh, we published many papers on this point. And I would like to remember what just uh, uh, outlined by, by Patrizia that uh, elevated abundance of Christian Selenace uh, reduce visceral and adipose tissue and uh, uh, contribute to a healthier metabolic profile in the elderly. Um, this is the, the most important paper that we published on the effect of one year Mediterranean diet. Uh, about 600 people followed the diet for one year and randomly 600 were controls in five European countries. And in, uh, it's clear that you can see here that the, the, uh, a lot of bad parameters Dec decreased uh, and many good parameters increased hand grip, constructional praxis, but also adiponectin, memory, and so on. So there was a very beneficial effect of one year uh, Mediterranean diet on the level of inflammation and many other parameters. And these are the diet positive and diet negative. Uh, uh, effect on the different taxa. What is important uh, is that uh, Mediterranean diet had a very strong impact on the, the nodes of the microbiome network, so the most important uh, 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 bacterial species. And I would like to finish suggesting that one year Mediterranean diet promotes epigenetic rejuvenation but this rejuvenation is country and sex specific. Uh, in this study, we use the epigenetic biomarkers to study the impact of nutritional intervention in the framework of the New Age project uh, in, uh, in subject enrolled in Italy and in Poland, just to have uh, two opposite. Uh, Italy and, 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 and Poland are very different from uh, a nutritional point of view and uh, was performed on, on randomly 120 randomly selected subject, 60 Italians and 60 Polish, uh, but all were following the Mediterranean diet at the time zero and after one year. And uh, uh, the adherence to the protocol was checked and uh, we did uh, an analysis of DNA methylation uh, with the Illumina uh, bead chip, which check about uh, uh, half a million of uh, uh, CPGs, methylated CPGs. Uh, and of this, we calculated the Horvat clock, which refers to 353 CPG site and has, is a sort of DNA methylation clock. And then all the people were genotyped with more than 700,000 uh, uh, genetic markers. And uh, what we measured was also the so-called age acceleration as a universal measure of epigenetic age, 
and correspond to residuals that result from the regression of DNA methylation on chronological age. So what is remarkable is that there was a, also a beneficial effect in Italians, but in Polish people, this was particularly evident, probably because they are less accustomed to a Mediterranean diet and the age acceleration were significantly lower at T1 versus baseline, which suggests that the Polish rejuvenated and here you can see here, these are all the Polish, but this was particularly evident in Polish females, uh, very highly significant. And uh, this is, you can see here the difference between uh, before and after the diet. And uh, the rejuvenation was about uh, one, two years, which is, a, and this is uh, one of the first, probably the first, uh, example that you can rejuvenate people biologically with a biological intervention, uh, which means Mediterranean diet. And the Mediterranean diet has an enormous effect, a very strong effect on the gut microbiota. So if you put all together, probably you rejuvenate people with Mediterranean diet through modifying the gut microbiota. And uh, the, of course, uh, you can make uh, other measurement. Uh, and uh, yes, there are some particular that you can see in the paper. And this is the, the intrinsic epigenetic age acceleration, which is important because do not take into account the uh, composition of the cells that you take from the blood to measure this, uh, this uh, uh, biological age. Uh, and the other point is that we observe the significant rejuvenation, a negative association of age acceleration with the, in the people where there was a higher level of adherence to Mediterranean diet. So the more the people followed the Mediterranean diet, the more they had a positive effect, a rejuvenating effect. So Claudio, yes, sorry uh, for I, interrupting. I, yes, yes. You, I, you have I, two minutes uh, left. Yes, I will question. finish. So it's also related to genetic variants. We studied that. I will not go into details. So in conclusion, we report that a Mediterranean diet can promote epigenetic re rejuvenation, likely by impacting on the, on the gut microbiota. This is country and population specific, and is also sex, gender, and individual specific. The, um, we need a personalized approach. So I thank you very much for uh, everything. And I would like also to suggest that there was a paper recently published by the, the group of Lee Hood uh, showing that in 9,000 9, 9, people uh, that the divergence, so each person is becoming individual, different regarding the, the gut microbiota, and they replicated many of the finding that uh, uh, that uh, Patricia was illustrating. So we are on the right track. If you would like to rejuvenate Mediterranean diet, gut microbiota, uh, and Patricia and Claudio to measure your rejuvenation. <laughs> Thank you so much, Claudio. That was a really good ending. Yeah, and um, we, we have some questions in the chat and uh, or in the question and answer session. And Patricia has been so kind, so she has been answering while you were also talking, Claudio. Um, and um, um, then we have one question also, which is related to both of you, because it's uh, related to the reduction of fermentation that Patricia uh, showed also in, in the beginning of her presentation. And with what you have also talked about now, Claudio, do you think that with this reduced fermentation capability uh, that has an impact on the digestion, do you think that we need to modify the nutritional guidelines um, 
due to, to these findings well, and this research? Well, nutri well, nutrition, of course, uh, is one of the major uh, variables for the gut microbiota. And of course, a Mediterranean diet, uh, uh, we published a lot of papers, uh, but there are many papers suggesting that uh, is one of the best. Of course, it's not the only one. You, for example, Japanese uh, uh, diet can be extremely interesting uh, or other diet. We studied Mediterranean diet and we can show that the Mediterranean diet is so good that uh, likely we have to increase the study, likely uh, turns back the epigenetic clock. So the rejuvenation. And I, and I, I suggested that this is uh, one of the first uh, um, uh, data showing that you can rejuvenate your, you can put back your biological age just by a nutritional intervention. This is extremely important mm -hmm. because this is a very, very tough biological clock. So to, to turn back a clock like this suggests that the intervention of the, the Mediterranean diet has very profound uh, biological metabolic effect on most of the organs of the body, not only on the gut, but yeah. also on the brain, mm -hmm. the, the liver, the, and so on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, maybe because we have also uh, not so much time, but we have uh, a lot of questions. Uh, we have two questions, which I think uh, can be in one. Um, Patricia and Claudio, you show uh, really some changes and some switch of the microbiome, and especially after 80s. Uh, and uh, do you think that today there is a window of, of interventions of probiotics after, for example, 60? 60 years old, and especially, do you think that there is a place is also for some probiotics like the bifidobacteria ones, because we saw a decrease also after 60. So uh, I think it's really the question of the window of the opportunities and where we can still act on this switch. Patricia. Uh, it's quite difficult to answer this, uh, this question. First of all, because uh, you know that, uh, we know that uh, there is a, a strong uh, uh, inter-individual uh, uh, differences uh, concerning uh, the microbiome. So it is, uh, uh, we don't have uh, a unique uh, uh, situation. And so we have uh, to uh, manage with uh, this uh, uh, diversity. And uh, second point, uh, um, in order to answer in a scientific way to this uh, uh, difficult question, I think we need uh, uh, longitudinal studies. We need uh, uh, longitudinal studies are necessary in order to better understand the when starts the switch of the uh, um, microbiome uh, composition. And uh, for sure, bifidobacteria uh, tend uh, to decrease with aging, even if uh, in our centenarians and semi-supercentenaria, I didn't mention before, we have seen a positive uh, trend. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, uh, it was uh, not uh, significant, uh, a significant statistical uh, significant increase as uh, we have seen for Kermansian and Christensenella, but uh, we have seen uh, a, a um, positive trends uh, um, concerning the concentration, the abundance of uh, bifidobacteria in centenarians and semi-supercentenarians. So it uh, suggests that uh, this uh, data, this preliminary uh, data suggests that uh, uh, bifidobacteria for sure can uh, useful in counteracting uh, the proteolytic layout uh, uh, of uh, characteristic of, uh, uh, of aging. Yeah, I do think that we can have uh, more than uh, one hour conversations because we saw also that finally what you presented for the centenaria people, it's really interesting because we have the feeling that it's quite, you know, the same stages on the installations during the early life. 
you know, for example, some sequences on some installation on the microbiome, you know, some spaces. So I do think that there is a cycle also to understand between, you know, some, uh, you know, some metano and metageno installation and also bifido places. So I do think that there are a lot of uh, things to say today, but we have to, I'm really sorry because we have to close the sessions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know that Italian speakers are the best one because they are also the good one to, to play soccer also, we know that. <laughs> but anyway, I think it was really a great session and I wanted to really to thank Claudio and Patrick for this uh, this amazing talk and uh, we will try also to answer to all the questions we receive and uh, so we will uh, we will also put because we register the session so we will put also in our IPA website the links between uh, between this presentation and also the links uh, with all of us and uh, for sure you can also ask uh, any type of questions you you want to ask to us and uh, I think one of the mildest words will, will be, uh, as last time, the take-home messages is we, we saw really exciting things, and especially on the key role on the microbiome, but also the key role of uh, diet, and especially the fact that we can hack on the diet, probably at any ages. But to see some changes in the centenaria and to keep the levels to be a centenarian, we need probably more insight and more scientific, uh, I will say, demonstrations. So that's it for me. So thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank again for this great opportunity. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks a lot. Information on the IPA Europe website.